everybody. Courtney Lachlan, Craig Lachlan, thanks for joining us for another week of Family Face Off. Reporting live from Studio <laughs> 18 in the Locker's basement. Oops, sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that part. Just Studio 18. I thought it was Locker 18 <laughs> Studio. You've confused me no, again. No, you confused me last week when you kept correcting me saying, no, it's Locker 18. It's okay. Studio Lachlan. Well, the door coming down to the basement now has... Studio oh. 18 on the door, <laughs> okay. and that really helps me out because our other 17 studios in the basement, <laughs> I don't go into anymore. So we're good now. It's Studio okay. 18. We can only hope. <laughs> um, Dad, we got a fun show today. We're obviously talking about some more beer. Um, we're a quarter of the way through the season, so we're going to give out some grades, put our teacher hats on. We're going to talk some outdoor hockey, and we have a great guest on today's episode. Bobby Gould, one of my favorite teammates of all time. He was a right winger. Gartz was first line. I was second line, and unfortunately, Bobby was third <laughs> line. But I'm not going to get into that right now, okay? Well, let's get into the Caps um, and their hockey, Dad, because they finally beat the Penguins. They stopped awesome their four game. Game. Skid. Awesome game. And because we are a quarter of the way through... Let's hand out some grades of what we think through the for the Caps through 14 games. Okay, and you're going to kick us off, Court. You're going to take the offense category and tell me what you're going to grade the Caps so far through 14. I think this one's relatively easy, given that the Caps always have good offensive power firepower with their lineup. Um, they lead the division with goals four. They have 19 different skaters that have uh, recorded a goal. Nick Backstrom, number 19, leads the team in goals and points. Um, I'm going to give them a B plus, A minus. I mean, their offense is always going to be what we expected, I feel like. Wow, I wish I had you as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm with you on that. The offense is never going to go away. Right. It's going to be part of the fabric of the Washington Capitals, yes. I think, forever from now on, ever since Ovi arrived, but it's going to continue. That's sort of going to be the style of game this town is always going to want their teams to play. I'm going to go defense next, which is a tough one for me because... Mm -hmm. They've allowed the most goals in the division with 52. Uh, they are sporadic in their own zone. They have a tough time, to me, adjusting to the man-on-man -man coverage and what happens when there's a breakdown. Right. Like I, when I played, we'd play some man-on-man, -man, but when I lost my defenseman, the next guy sort of stood up and took, took him. And, right. and I think sometimes... You become so robotic, so worried about your guy mm -hmm. that you don't help the other guys. Like that one goal a couple of weeks back by Potato, who hadn't scored in like three years from the Rangers, that to me just set up the alarm in my mind. If I have an alarm clock here somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. That, oh my God, they were just worried about who I had and they had, and they weren't really focused on the whole picture. So... I'm going to be a tough grader. Joe B says I'm always very tough. Um, I'm going C plus. Ooh. Yikes. For team okay. defense. I do think it's going to improve with the injuries coming back. Mm -hmm. The full lineup intact may take them 15 to 20 games to grasp the whole concept, but I think they're getting it and they're only going to get better. We see glimpses, I feel like. We yes, see some exactly. good and some bad. It's a little inconsistent, exactly. but it's a new system too and a new coach demanding some new things. Um, I'm going to go next category, power play. Again, kind of scoring goals. Who doesn't love to score goals? Their power play, they're one of five teams that their power play is over 30%. 11 power play goals. This though is interesting. Seven different players have scored a power play goal on the Caps. Alex Sovechkin, only one power play goal. That's a surprising stat I've, to me. It's true. It's true. But he did miss some games. He did. but um, And his timing may be off a little bit. Right. And I think because of a shortened season, you might even see teams saying, you know what? Why should we allow Ovi to shoot? Let's sort of shade him a little bit sure. and let everybody else shoot. And maybe that's why they have seven guys with those power play goals. So I'm going to give it a B plus. It's good. Nice. It's good. Nice. I'm if feeling I, nice today, if Dad. I, okay, so... If I was in college, gave you an apple. <laughs> Can you have better than a 4.2 average in college? Because that's what I would have had with you as my oh, teacher. A 4.2? <laughs> I don't know that anymore. Maybe I'm off kilter because of my age or whatever, but well over a four in hockey and all my other You classes. caught me on a good day. Yeah, what can I there say? There you go. Okay. Penalty kill. Hmm. That wasn't that hard, I don't think, for me to give that a grade. I think the penalty kill to date uh, is a solid B. I, I still think that 
they're a work in progress. Uh, I think Hathaway, Dowd, uh, Eller, Wilson, the forwards are, I think, playing very well. I think sometimes they get beat where they, I know they want to go on the attack, but sometimes they get puck watching and a couple of goals were in tight on Vanacek on their on the opposition's power play where they maybe left a lane open or didn't have exactly the perfect stick preparation mm-hmm. and, and details to where the stick should be. So I think that's a work in progress, but solid D, uh, solid B, D. Wow. <laughs> Wait a sec, I'm talking defense, I get all confused. Like, Wait a sec. Wow, a you caught me D. on a good day. You caught wow. him on a bad wow. day. Wow, wow, wow. That's a I misspoke in a big way. <laughs> it's a solid B. Okay. And don't get right. confused, okay? okay? So when you come down to it, I just think when you look at special teams court, I always talk about the one hundred plateau and where they should be. Yep. You had the PK at just over eighty one percent. You had the power play over thirty, well over one ten. If I did my math correctly, 4-0 student. I don't know, Dad. I wasn't really listening like (laughs) I normally do. I just sit here and I nod. (laughs) Okay, that's good. (laughs) Okay. So I think that the uh, special teams index is fine. Mm -hmm. So overall, not bad through 14 games with what they've had to persevere through. And their record, 7-4-3, not bad. Not Take bad it. giving everything. Yep. Um, so, Dad, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit and have some fun hockey talk. The NHL is having some outdoor hockey games awesome. this weekend in Lake Tahoe. That's obviously been a big initiative of theirs is to kind of get hockey back to its original roots and play some games outside. Um, Caps, obviously, have been involved in a couple winter classics. So, great thing that they're doing out there. I encourage you to check out the pictures of the rink renderings. But this got me thinking... I know you have some stories about building rinks in your backyard. Yes, that's how it all got started, living in downtown Toronto. Small backyards, but we made do with what we had. And we had linoleum floors so we could walk on our skates throughout the house and right down the stairs into the backyard where my dad each year and everyone in the family would be involved building hockey a hockey rink that wasn't bigger than 20 by 20 it's not like people and not are thinking, like the outdoor hockey rinks you see now on social no, media with boards and lights no, and penalty boxes this and everything old barn wood <laughs> as as walls uh chicken uh mesh at the end of the yard just to hold the pucks in and at the end of the day it was just for the fun to be outdoors right. to enjoy it so what we did was with snow coming here to Washington, the DMV, to make your rink, you got to get out there as soon as it snows three to five inches. You stomp down the snow with your boots. You wear big boots. Mm. You stomp it down. You could even wear snowshoes. That was a trick mm. when they had, yeah. they used to use snowshoes to tramp it down. You then get out the water, spray them down. Usually the first night we'd spray it three or four times where my dad would stay up. Even if, if he had to get up for work at 6 a.m. with a Canadian Pacific Railway who he worked for, he would be out watering to 1 a.m., like watering wow. on the hour because it was cold enough that it would instantly freeze. So we'd get out there with our boots. It would be all crushed and all hard. You couldn't skate. It wasn't flat. And mm-hmm. then you'd fill in the holes with extra snow, and then you'd skate on it right away so that you, the burrs of your boot marks and uh, whatever you stomped it with would go off because of the blades cutting into it. And sure enough, within three days, it was textbook. When you stepped on it, Courtney, in the morning, beautiful sun out, beautifully cold. It would sort of crack and ripple, but man, the best how, ice I've ever seen. How many hours on. would you spend out there? Eight yeah, hours, easy. Eight A typical hours. Saturday Morning and and Saturday I gave you it because it was hockey night in Canada at mm-hmm. eight o'clock at night always at Toronto Maple Leafs, it would be probably ten or eight nine a.m. nine a.m. to noon eat lunch, flood the ice, scrape the ice, come back on at two or three, go to dinner, have dinner, come back out after dinner and play till exactly 8 o'clock. When Sounds the Maple no different Leafs... than your schedule now. Yeah, it does, does it? <laughs> Wait a second. That doesn't sound good, or does it? And then, and then we'd go back out, and we'd play to the intermissions, and then go back out, because my dad installed lights. Mm. And it was so cool and great, but then he made a Zamboni. And really? I thought he was Frank Zamboni for a minute because he invented one <laughs> for Tom outdoor Lachlan. use. Tom Lachlan. But he invented one for outside use, where it was a hose attached to steel pipes. And the steel pipe was a handle, which was about four and a half feet long by about an inch wide. He then had a 
four or five, five foot steel bar at the bottom where he'd drill holes in every inch and then he put on a piece of carpet. Wow. 12 inch piece of carpet that's just like the back of a Zamboni. Mm-hmm. So the water would come up out of the pipes, hit the carpet, and then it would be flat on the ice and you'd drag it along the ice and just spectacular the type of ice you could make like that. And we had such a great time. There's nothing like having sisters that you shoot pucks on <laughs> and telling them. Um, actually, as I recall, my brother used to do that to me right down here in this basement. He'd say, I would be like, Kyle, I want to play mini hockey with you. He'd be like, great, step in the net. And he would just fire pucks at me. So and, it must be a sister my thing. my sisters were fabulous. And then they'd also skate out and we'd have kids over and it That's would awesome. be a big party day in, day out. And the pictures fans that you may be looking at here are some old pictures. First of all, I did play for the Dorset Bruins. So my Bruins outfit is a real Bruins outfit. The Red Wings were the Toronto Red Wings at the time in Mm. my white and red uniform. And the best picture that we have here is the one in the backyard with my buddies. (laughs) I'm second from left, even though some people don't believe that. Oh, so you're next to the kid with the glasses, which looks like Ralph from A Christmas Story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you could say oh, that. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mom. Don't hate me. Mom thought that that was you for a second. And I was like, no, it's not. I was like, that didn't have glasses. <laughs> have you ever heard of the word divorce? <laughs> oh, poor That <Mom>. stinks. <laughs> Look at how I turned out. (laughs) (laughs) But it's not you with the glasses. It's the one next to him. Um, How was that little shrimp out there? (laughs) (laughs) With the cute little smile. Um, Great stuff, Dad, talking about outdoor rinks. Make sure to check out the games this weekend. I think they'll be on NBC. Um, Colorado and Vegas, Boston Flyers will be playing. Dad, we have a very special guest joining our show today. Yes, this is so exciting, fans. You've got to make sure you listen to this whole interview. It's about 10 or 15 minutes long, and it's spectacular. It's the great Bobby Gould, who played on one of the best checking lines ever put together with Gaetan Deshane and Glenn Curry. And I had the chance, to, we had the chance to catch up with Bobby. And the first question was, Hey, Bobby, what have you been doing? <laughs> well, it's uh, things have slowed down quite a bit. I'm a retired from, well, I retired from hockey, obviously, but I retired. From teaching all oh, about five years ago, three years ago, my wife corrected me now. <laughs> you see, your memory's still not there, Bobby. You see, I can only remember what I want to remember. <laughs> okay, so you retired? Yes, retired. So I taught when I retired from the game. Uh, we moved back to Oil Springs. We had a farm out in Oil Springs, so we moved back there, and I farmed that. And I taught school, uh, both elementary and high school, for 25 years. Wow. So back in 81, 82, you came to Washington from Calgary. What was that like to come to D.C.? Well, it was, I met the team, when I found about the trade, I met the team in Minnesota. And I did not know one person, (laughs) one hockey player on that team. You know, I knew the names and everything, but there wasn't a person on there that I knew. But, uh, you know, it worked out. It was a it was a great for me and great for my career because it gave me a chance to to be in the lineup every night and get an opportunity to play and hopefully do well. And things did work out well for me. So what were your first impressions of playing at Old Cap Center that year? Well, (laughs) uh, Randy Holt and I got traded together in the first week and a half. We had a heck of a time trying to even get to the rink. We didn't know where it was. (laughs) I bet you you just went around the Beltway life list and forgot to get off. Well, he didn't know which exit to go on. And, uh, it was uh, it was quite a treat. A couple of times we were running into the into the rink, you know, about ten or fifteen minutes late. They looked at, looked the other way because we were rookies and we didn't know what we were doing. But uh, uh, you know, just Craig, just to be able to play in the NHL, yeah. I, I didn't care where it was. Okay, you arrived in 81, uh, whole sale changes in 82, the four of us arrived from Montreal, there's a bunch of new guys into the lineup, what was your recollection of 82-83 recollection of for you? Well, I remember when the trade happened, uh, I have said this to a number of people, 
I think that was a turning point for the Caps organization as far as becoming a credible, competitive, every year type of hockey team because that, well, that 82, 83 year it was the first year that they ever made the playoffs. And I just remember when you four guys kind of come into the, we had our training camp in Hershey, and I just remember the four years walking in, and it just, all of a sudden, it was a different feeling. It was almost And like, it was me with those three other guys. Who the heck were they doing? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even remember those names. My memory's gone too, Goldie. Well, I know. That, uh, <laughs> you probably, I know what you were thinking. Who the hell is this Laughlin? This Laughlin, this, Laughlin, this McLaughlin. I knew who Jarvis was. And I knew who Langlois was. And I knew who Langway was. But I didn't know who they were. But uh, all, through, all four of you obviously contributed. And Rod was, as soon as you walked in, you could just feel that. He was kind of running the hockey club and he, you know, and all of a sudden he's the captain and, you know, he hadn't played a one game in the, in the Caps jersey and they named him captain. But, uh, you know, that big year, uh, I thought it, I didn't realize it was such a big deal for us to make the playoffs, mm -hmm. but it certainly was for, for the organization. So you talk about those playoffs. Um, I did a little digging online, and I saw that you scored the first Caps playoff goal in franchise history in that year. April 6th was the date in 1983 versus New York Islanders. Do you remember that? Can you take us through your memory of, of scoring that goal? No. <laughs> Come on, Goldie. You do have a better memory than that. You're just being laid back. It was top shelf. I did <laughs> And I buried it top shelf over Gary Smith. How does that sound? <laughs> yeah, it sounds, that sounds really good. So you don't even remember it. We, I remember standing off the side of the net and the puck I had, uh, well, it was with Gay Tad Shane and Glenn Curry. And we ended up uh, scoring. But it, I can remember standing off on the opposite side, like my off wing and on the side of the post. And there the puck was, and I just banged it in. So you I see, and I, and I remember it differently, Gooley, because I remember it. You and I were the premier players in the NHL not to use our stick to score goals. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have ricocheted off your butt, but if you say you got it on your stick, I'm okay with that. Okay. Well, we, you know, we had to keep the budget down, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay, you're lying. You mentioned your line, Gooley. To this day, I tell Courtney and I tell all the Caps fans out there every time your line in the 80s comes up that I thought you, Curry, and Duchesne might have been the best so-called energy checking line of the decade how yeah. why was that line so good well first off you know all three of us if you ask somebody hockey trivia they wouldn't know who we were <laughs> which, was, which was okay i mean we didn't care but you know the three of us i think had the same mindset of you know we were pretty straight ahead basic hockey players you know get the puck in deep get the puck out get it in deep and we had, uh, I think if our whole goal was if we made the other team play in their end of the rink for our shift, that was a successful. You know, we had your line with Alan Hayworth and yourself, and, uh, you know, we had various left wingers, but then you had, you know, Bobby Garts, Garts yeah, and uh, Garts and that. And you guys were expected to score more, and we weren't. So I think not much pressure on us other than making sure that if we took care of our end of the rink, got the pucks in deep in there, then we were going to – it was a, a successful shift. Okay, Bobby, we can't let you go without talking about <laughs> one of the biggest events that I still get asked about every day, and I said I was on the bench, the Mario Lemieux oh. fight yeah. and punch. But I want to dig deeper. What maybe happened during the game prior to that or in games past? Was there something said back and forth? And then how did it all come together? Well, Craig, you, with, you know, with uh, myself and Glenn Curry and Gay Tandu Shane, and then eventually it, it was Kelly Miller there for a few years too, we were the checking line. So we were the line that was, you know, assigned to play against Lemieux all the time. And uh, which meant that you were going to play a lot because obviously those guys play a lot. But mm -hmm. one night in Pittsburgh there, we were playing against them, and and I was supposedly checking against Lemieux, and all of a sudden the whistle blew, and sort of we got kind of pushing and shoving and talking to each other, and I made the comment to him. I says, "How come it's always everybody else that has to stand up for yourself?" 
for you. Said, <laughs> no, there is a backstory to this. Well, there's a little bit. Okay. And so I said, you know, you always start things, and then you look over your shoulder waiting for somebody else to come in and finish it for you. <laughs> so, you know, we left it at that. And then the night that the actual fight happened, we were uh, – I don't know if it was an icing call or an offside anyways. I think it was an offside, Goldie, because I'm looking straight across from the bench, and you were just inside the blue line. Okay. And, uh, you know, my mindset at that time wasn't – the fight was, you know, my mindset was here's a chance to get this guy, who's one of the greatest players that ever played, off the ice for and, and a trade-off with Bob Gould. So there's five or seven minutes of ice time <laughs> that he may not be playing. So I thought, well, this is a heck of a trade-off. So, and I said, well, you know what? If you want to go, let's go. And I says, drop the gloves and let's go. And, and you said that first or did he say that first? I said, said him. I said, let's go. If you want to go, let's go. And unfortunately unfor for me, I did okay. Unfortunately for him, he didn't. And I can basically say that's about the only fight that I think I ever won. So. Well, he was six inches taller than you, about 30 pounds heavier. Did you know when you caught him with that one punch that that could be the punch to knock him out? No, I I didn't know, Craig. I honestly, you know, I... Even when you hit him? Bobby Gould unquirking a couple of right hands on Lemieux. Simpson, third that's man in. The Penguins upset. You know what? I... I don't even remember how it felt, tell you the truth. <laughs> but I do remember once I hit him, he, you know, he just, you know, his knees buckled and he, and he went down. And I just remember, Craig, after the fight, guys were coming over to me. And I remember Dan Quinn, who was a heck of a hockey player. Yes. He came over, he came over to the penalty box and I got es escorted into the penalty box. He says, Gouldy, we're going to get you. And I looked at him and I said, you're the last player that I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it was like Risley or some of those tough guys they had back there, you might have yeah. said, uh-oh. Yeah. And did anything ever happen after that when you played Lemieux? Nothing. And I, did you ever talk? Oh, no. I've never, never talked since after that. And, you know, if that happened today, I can imagine a guy like Tom Wilson would have stepped in after on the very first shift and lined up across from you, and you're thinking, "Oh, oh here we go!" And, mm -hmm. it, that's uh -huh. and but no, there was no, uh, you know, there was no repercussions from other teammates from Pittsburgh. Um, I have watched a few of uh, the Muse fights on TV, like on the YouTube and that, and I felt like I was kind of fortunate because I've seen him fight a couple times, and he was pretty good. <laughs> Oh, girly. I, and he, if you remember back, I, I think he broke his jaw and spent a night in the hospital here in Washington. Yeah, well, it, I think that's what happened. I, I know that uh, there was the player on each side got his, you know, got underneath his arms there and, and carried him off the ice there. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess, you know, I've never, never had the opportunity to cross paths with him. That's, that's, that hasn't happened. This is one of our favorite Landover <laughs> legend, legend segments. And I, 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 fans still rave about you. They rave about the line. They rave about the roaring eighties when we had a ton of fun, sometimes probably more fun than playing on the ice. <laughs> but that's another story that we're going to catch up with you at a later date. But buddy, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. We loved having you being a part of Family Face Off. Well, I appreciate it, Craig. It's uh, it's nice to catch up with some guys and nice to catch up with yourself and your family and that and wish you the best and uh, wish the Caps the best too. Boy, do I ever want to be like Bobby Gould, right? <laughs> Retired, <laughs> relaxing up home, seems to look great with his family <laughs> and grandkids. And let me say this about Bobby. Number one, a great leader. Number two, one of the best checking lines with Kid Curry and Gaetan Duchesne the Caps have ever seen. One of the best penalty-killing units when you had Curry and Gould on one, then you had Jarvis and whoever on the other one because Dougie Jarvis was an absolute gem when it came to penalty-killing. But Bobby Gould, man, I, I looked up to him a lot. I, I, I thought he was the real pro, and it's more than he's become – famous because of the punch on mm -hmm. Mario mm -hmm. and we finally found out what happened and right. how it all came together. Right. But man, what a great guy just to hang out with. And, you know, I always watched him because 
I was a second line right winger. Mike Gartner was first, and Bobby was third. I oh. hope he doesn't get this up in Canada. Maybe oh, okay. he can get family uh, face off, yeah, right? Yeah, because I'm going to send it to him. <laughs> Bobby, I'm sorry. You were two also. We were both second line right wingers. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed um, our Landover Legends segment. We have a lot of great guests coming up for the rest of the season as we're a quarter of the way through. I can't believe it. You can also go back and check out our past Landover Legends segments. We had Rod Langway, Peter Bond. Andra, Ken Sabrin, and you can check all of those out on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts, or at realfundc.com slash family face off. Many more to come, Court. It's great to have these old guys on. What did I say? Old guys? Old guys. <laughs> well, speaking of you old guys, okay. I think you old guys used to drink a lot of beer back in the day. Yes, we did. So we've got another segment of Locker's Libations where, Dad, I can't believe it. You must be, I don't know how you have time to even cover Caps Hockey because you've got <laughs> another beer come out. Your first collab with Astrolab, Wicked Rister, has done so well. I'm pretty sure it's- Rave reviews. And it's basically sold out. Yeah. Um, so we want to thank Emma and Matt up oh, at Astrolab my, in Silver Spring. thank them enough. Uh, it's been fabulous. Fans are going crazy for this beer. Uh, beer lovers, hockey lovers. It's it was just a great collaboration. Then on the heels of that, all of a sudden, out of the blue, Kai Lekowitz, the owner of Aslan Beer, says, "Hey, your locker eighteen is quickly fermenting, and it's going to be ready sooner rather than later." Mm. Court. So all of a sudden, locker eighteen part two. The last one was last year, and another fabulous IPA beer. And you spent the day at Asland um, helping them and participating in the whole canning process, right? Absolutely. I was there with Kai and Andrew, who I don't really want to talk much about, but Andrew Kelly, one of the owners with Kai, sort of pissed me off. Okay. I love talking (laughs) to Kai. Him and I seem to see it on the same, we're on the same page. Okay. But when Andrew Kelly says the following, well, we may have a better chance with a Lemieux beer. Oh, no. Yeah, a Mario Lemieux beer. And all he does is stick it into my side <laughs> every time I walk by him. So he's a huge Penguins fan. So there's a little I don't think, no. Oh. The thing is, I don't think oh. he is. He's just trying to stick it to oh. me to get me riled okay. up. Okay, well, it's working. It, is it did not? <laughs> work. But two of the greatest guys, two great brewmasters that do a heck of a job with Aslan. We're so excited to be part of Locker 18 once again. And when I was out there, I had a chance to catch up with Kai. And he gave us his words on what's new and different about this Locker 18. This newer version of Locker 18 probably has twice as much citra as we did last year. And a lot of that was due to Craig's influence on the beer. He had a really nice critique about what he was looking for and how to round the beer out a little bit more. And we thought, you know, the simplest way to hit that is put some more extra sexy citra in that beer. So we've got about 2x citra this time. What does... Does it still have a nice New England haze to it? Oh, absolutely. That thing is as hazy as you could imagine and you needed it to be. Now, what generated us to collab? You you are big into giving back to the community and the DMV, and the Lachlan Family Foundation is so excited to be a part of this beer again. How important is it for you guys to do this? I think it's a matter of uh, we align our relationships through friendship. We became good friends with the Loglin family over the last two years, and when we learned about your foundation, it made the most sense to do what we could do as friends of your family. And this is the easiest route for us because this is our profession, we know what speaks to the consumers, and in doing so, that makes making a donation on, on our behalf to your foundation much easier. Where can people get Locker 18? The best way to get it is to try it on draft here at Aslan Beer Company, either in Alexandria or Herndon, and then to grab a four pack to go. It will be in distribution here in Northern Virginia and in Southern Maryland, around probably Montgomery County there in Maryland, and uh, look for it on draft. Dad, your days are full. (laughs) (laughs) Like, where do you even fit in calling games? Like, you're at breweries every week. Uh, Well, I know, eh? (laughs) and it's it's so difficult, Court, because you've got a taste test. (laughs) You've got it. You got Which it. usually does not involve eating, by the way, or during the canning process. I learned this at Astrolab when we were there canning the whole day. The next thing I knew, I think I had like three beers that are, what percent is this? Seven? Seven to eight. And I didn't eat breakfast. The next thing I knew, I was like, woo, dad, it's time to go home. <laughs> yeah, they can hit you. But you know what? They're so 
uh, hazy, they're New England style, and we are so happy to have friends like both Aslan and Astro Labs to come along and collab a beer for our foundation. I, I mean, how it doesn't get much better than that. We can all enjoy a beer, we can all wa- enjoy a hockey game, and you can do it all for the foundation. So Locker's Libations continues once again. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. we got to get some wine talk because I'm reading all this double IPA, drop, dry, uh, dry hop with loads of citrus, Amarillo, Nelson, Simcoe. Let's talk some red wine hopefully coming up here, Dad. That sounds like a good we can idea. get Joe B on to talk some red wine, do a little wine tasting. We're going to do some, yes, we, a wine show is upcoming. Okay, you heard it here. Um, speaking of upcoming, Dad, mm-hmm. what's up? With the Caps, they've got Buffalo, New York, the Devils, Penguins, all on their schedule before we come back into the studio and record another episode of Family Face-Off. Yeah, because it's been a crazy schedule, right? They had right. to uh, reschedule like seven or eight games at the Caps game. So with the Sabres coming to town who are struggling, the New Jersey Devils are struggling, the Rangers are struggling. I think those teams in particular, those three that the Caps have upcoming, they could easily sweep those three games. It's going to be mm-hmm. – they always play them one-goal games, but at the end – the Caps got to pick up points against teams that I don't personally think are going to make the playoffs. And the Devils will be the last team for them to see in their division, I believe, right? Have we seen yes, everybody else? Yes, we have not seen right. the Devils. So once they yep. see the Devils, and look, they're a team that's been hit very hard by COVID, one of Ooh, the worst hit teams. Really bad. Um, they have a grueling schedule, 47 games and 83 nights and 10 back backs. Wow. <laughs> that all sounds, their rescheduling. That is just a little less that I've been doing for it. <laughs> like you said, I've been busy. <laughs> Now, what's on your schedule? Oh, you know, a little hockey, a little beer, a little dating. Wait, what did you just say? What was the third one? Oh, a little dating. Did I didn't tell you I'm doing no. a date lab with the Washington Post. You send it an application, and they match you. So we'll see. I may or may not give you an update, depending on how it goes. Are you moving? <laughs> No, but I'm bringing these to my date, my do, Zoom date. Do you have a remote studio somewhere? <laughs> no, but that's next on the list that you can help me build. And, you know, Court, I'm looking at this, and yeah. this may be the best line I've ever played on. Oh. <laughs> Wicked Rister on the right, the real locker at center, who doesn't back check, and a grinding locker 18 on the left. So, yeah, after that, I am moving, Dad. <laughs> after you just pushed me off the first Because you're usually in this spot here. I know I am. And, and Kyle is usually on this side. Mm-hmm. Sorry, kids. Okay. This is my well, favorite line. We hope you guys enjoy your snowy weekend, Dad. We have um. Oh yeah. We're yep. gonna prepare. Yep. I'm for the prepared. snowy week here in DC, we got our Caps bombers. I gotta do it up. It's gonna oh. be really windy. <laughs> okay. Gotta well, do it up. We thank you guys for joining us on week six, Dad. Week a six. A family face-off reporting from Studio. My 18. contract is 14 weeks, so I'm good. <laughs> So we're almost done here. Um, Thanks for joining us again on Family Face Off. I'm Courtney Lachlan. He's Craig Lachlan. He's just my dad. Be sure to check out all episodes of Family Face Off anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. You can also watch us on realfundc.com slash Family Face Off, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Let's go Caps. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next week.